So power washing your car in the winter is quite challenging. Even with the help of the power washer, you're still gonna get your hand on all the ice and the dirt and the salt that's left over. Check out, <coughs> check out all this ice that I have on my back table. This is all pure ice. And you know, it's already, it's already freezing my hand touching this, this simple layer of ice. So let's not let this cold temperature stop us from taking care of our cars, okay? So today, I'm gonna show you how to make a hot water mod or a hack for your water pressure washer. Stay tuned. So you may be asking yourself, why use hot water besides the obvious? Well, hot water one will mix much better with the chemicals you use to wash your car, meaning any soap or detergents you're gonna use it'll mix a lot better and finer in the hot water than cold water. Two, hot water just simply remove dirt and other things covering your car much better than cold water will. That's just a simple fact. And three, the, the hot temperature will give you a, a minute or two more time to dry off the car versus uh, cold water, which could almost instantly freeze depending on how cold your air temperature is. So the hot temperature will give you a little bit more working time uh, in order for you to dry your car before it forms into ice. But as always, always use your common sense when you're using hot water to wash your car in, in the cold temperatures because you don't want it freezing the ground after you finish washing. So pick a day where it won't be too cold, meaning it'll be above freezing temperatures for a few hours after you wash your car. Okay, let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's get started on all the components you're gonna need for this build. Uh, all these components you can get on online, like Amazon.com, or you can get it from your local hardware stores. They're all relatively cheap. So let's get started. Okay, first up is the thermostat controller. So in front of you is my thermostat controller. It can be any thermostat controller. Uh, I just have this one. And unfortunately, mine is only in Celsius, so these numbers are, are going to look a little funny uh, later on. But basically, this is the power for the thermostat. You plug this in. The thermostat has three displays. It has a start display, so it tells you the starting temperature you want. And has a on the right, all the way to the end, has the stop temperature. So that's the temperature where the thermostat will s stop. And in the middle is the current temperature that is sensed by this sensor. So here's the sensor. It's just a metal uh, receiver that you put in either the air or you can put it in things like liquid. So that's your sensor, okay? So what I'm gonna aim to do is keep the temperature between 100 and 110. And the reason being for that is there are seals inside your water pressure washer that have temperature limits and we don't want to go exceed those temperatures and uh, mess up those seals, okay? So we're going to keep the temperatures between 100 and 110. Okay, up next is the hose that we're going to use as the connector between our water source and the pressure washer. So this is a washing machine hose with three quarter inch female connectors on each end and we need to make sure we have connectors on each end. So this hose is one of the key factors that go that's gonna help make this mod work. We need to make sure this hose is no longer than five feet. It could be shorter, but no longer than five feet long, okay? Next, we will need a, a water immersion heater. So this is a water immersion heater. Basically it has a plug at the end and has a stainless steel head. And this is a extra large immersion heater. It's about 13 inches long. And it's used commercially to heat uh, liquids, uh, even for uh, food, it's uh, food safe. So this is an extra large immersion heater. And this is gonna provide the heat to the water. And then we're gonna need a pump. This is a fountain, uh, or you can call it an aquarium water pump. It's basically used to push water or to move water around in uh, little ponds or aquariums. 
and we're going to use this to push water into our pressure washer uh, taking the water from our source and pushing it uh, because we need some uh, pressure basically and this unit has a 400 gallons per hour rating so you want something in that range and this is not very pricey it's about it's about ten dollars on Amazon and then we need some fittings we have a half inch male to male uh, hose adapter and they basically this is for adding a, ho a garden hose connection to the water pump and then the other hose connector is a three quarter inch male to male uh, connector so you're going to need two of those I'm um, not two meaning one of this and one of this so two connectors in total in addition you're going to need a five uh, gallon water bucket with a lid so that's all you really need and let's just get started putting all this together and seeing how it works let's do this optionally you may also need some uh, 22 gauge steel uh, wire if you don't have this is that's fine you can get any string or cables that you may have in the house okay so here's my Home Depot bucket everyone's got one of these at, at home it doesn't need to be a Home Depot bucket you can use any other five gallon bucket okay so the first step you need to do is take your immersion heater element I have this here and take your steel cable wire and insert it through in between the elements and what you want to do is insert it and make a circle around one of the the legs of the element just like so so it's gonna be a loop around one element like so okay and then we're gonna insert it into the bucket and we're gonna suspend it like this okay now with the element suspended in the middle the heating element we want to take one end of the wire and wrap it around the ears of the bucket just like so and then just you know bring it up and give it a little twist if you want to secure it and then do the same thing for the other side so after you tie the cable to the bucket it'll just look something like this uh, the wires are wrapped around the handle and this goes over and your heating element is suspended in the middle of the bucket uh, the other thing to make sure is the bottom of your heating element is hanging off of the base of the bucket. We don't want the heating element to touch the the base. Uh, it might get high enough where it will melt your bucket. So I'm keeping about two inches off the bottom. Okay, so you may want to do the same. So next step, let's assemble the fountain pump. So here's my fountain pump, and the opening is about a one is about a half inch uh, thread opening female so we're going to take our one half inch uh, male uh, ho uh, adapter and we're going to simply screw it in okay so the other side will go to the washing machine uh, hose with the three quarter inch adapter as well so they go together like this okay so the next step is we want to take the temperature sensor from the thermostat controller and here it is the metal head is the actual sensor so what we want to do is just place it next to the pump and with a piece of tape I'm using masking tape here we want to secure the temperature sensor just like this next to the water pump uh, this is so that the sensor won't float around the bucket and touch the immersion uh, heater element. Um, the pump has some weight to it and has uh, four suction cups that will keep it to the bottom. So the thermostat sensor will be far away enough from the uh, heating element. And 
quickly, this is how the pump works. Uh, the source of water will be sucked in through the front of the face. And you will see that there's a minus sign here and there's a plus sign here. So if you want a little bit of water to go in, you would turn it to the right, clockwise. So if you want more water to be pulled into the uh, pump, you will turn it to the left, counterclockwise. As you turn it, you will see the opening will get larger and larger. So there you go. I will put it on max, on 400 gallons per hour flow. Okay? So you want to get a pump some, that's somewhere in that range. So next, I'm going to plug in my thermostat controller and show you how it works. So we have the start temperature and we have the current temperature uh, that the sensor is reporting and we have a stop temperature. So basically, if the temperature is uh, less than the stop temperature, this power source will turn on. Okay, so basically this is giving it a range. We want the range between 38 degrees Celsius, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. And we want the stop temperature to be 43 degrees Celsius, which is about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So the thermostat will power this uh, outlet until the stopping temperature, and then it will power off. And once the temperature drops back below the start temperature, the thermostat will power on again. Okay, so basically the thermostat will keep the temperatures between the start and the stop. So again, we shouldn't use a temperature setting that is higher than 120 degrees. And again, that is to protect any seals that are in your pump, in the fountain pump or in your water pressure washer. There's seals inside that you don't want to damage. Okay, and to give you a reference, the water that's coming out of your typical uh, home heater is about 120 degrees but you never use that directly you always mix it with cold water when you, you take a shower so that's just to give you a reference of what 120 degrees is in our case we're going to set it between 100 and 110 degrees and lastly our three quarter inch male to male adapter is used here this is my um, water pressure washing machine, and this is the source of where the garden hose will go in, so the source of your water. So we're going to take this adapter and put it in like this. Okay, and this uh, male side will take on the female end of the washing machine uh, hose, just like this. Okay, so there goes the connection. That's your water source. Okay, so the last step is to take your thermostat controller and take the wire from your immersion heater, which is right there, and just plug it in. So this thermostat unit will send power to the immersion heater once the temperature is in the range that it uh, deems fit. Okay? So let's put all of these things together in the bucket and get ready for water. Okay. So we have the whole setup here in front of you. We have the suspended immersion heater. We have the hose that's going to... Uh, take water from the pump down there and deliver this to the water pressure uh, washer. And we have a couple wires running out. The thin wire is for the temperature sensor. And this other wire is to power the pump. And so once I lay it flat, nothing is touching. Okay. And the last thing you can do is just take any gallon size Ziploc bag and just put in everything uh, like the controller, the thermostat controller and any extra wiring just as an extra little safety precaution. Okay, so I've taken all the controllers and all the extra wire and put it through a uh, one gallon Ziploc bag 
zipped it up and I'm gonna just secure it with a zip tie to the bucket handle and the only two wires that I should be sticking out are the thermostat power wire and the fountain pump uh, wire so that just will add a little extra safety so here's the final setup this is what everything will look like okay uh, pretty simple and we're gonna add in some water and show you how this whole setup will work okay guys now I'm I brought the whole setup outside and I'll show you how to use it and to test it okay so I have my extension cord it's gonna be connected to a GFCI socket make sure you are using that if you're gonna use this outdoors and or near water for extra protection from uh, electricity okay always be safe and this is what my setup looks like with just my bucket my extension cord with a T connector right now only my uh, uh, thermostat controller is plugged in which in turn feeds my uh, immersion heater so that's the setup and there's the hose coming out that's the water source uh, the hose will carry the water and the fountain motor will add some pressure to get that water inside my washer okay so it could be used this setup can be used with any pressure washer it doesn't matter if it's uh, gas or if it's uh, electric it will work the key is the length of this feeding cable this feeding cable must be less than five feet I've experimented often uh, with different sizes and things don't work out well if the hoses are over five feet long so keep them short okay my hose here is a four feet setup okay so let's check out what's inside Ooh. Ooh. there's my steaming water I'm not sure my uh, camera is catching this but there's steam coming off and here is my thermostat controller uh, I hope you can see that through the plastic bag uh, it's saying currently it's 41.8 degrees Celsius in the bucket and we're targeting 43 degrees as the max okay so I've been letting this run for a while I'm not sure we can see the steam coming out but uh, the steam might be fine, too fine for the camera pickup, but there is steam coming out. Okay, so it's nearing the 110 degrees Fahrenheit target that we want. Okay, uh, there's more steam coming out. Uh, I'm gonna let this run for a little bit longer. Uh, on average, a five gallon bucket will take somewhere between 10 to 12 minutes to get the temperature to uh, the 100 to 110 degrees. Uh, temperature range uh, but yours may vary depending on your air temperature and um, you know size of your bucket so we're gonna let this immersion heater element keep working and doing its thing I'm not sure but if you can see this but there are fine little bubbles uh, attached to the end of those uh, each coil of the heating element and you can see the bubbling action Okay, I'm not sure my camera is picking that up, but we're going to wait a few more minutes until we hit the temperature range that we want. Mm. All right, we reached the temperature we needed. We want it to be 43 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it's 44.4, one degree over, okay? So the thermostat controller has stopped the immersion controller. I mean the immersion element from heating so let's take a look inside the bucket whoa there you go look at that you can see all the hard work the immersion heater has been doing all the, you can see all the hot bubbles hanging around the coils of the immersion heater okay so now the next step is just to use your washer pressure Alright guys, now let's do the big test. Let's see if it works. 
here we go. Here's my gun, and it's all loaded up. Let's test it out. Perfect. It worked perfectly, just as I thought it would. Okay, this is awesome. Now I have hot water in the winter time to clean up anything I want. My car, my backyard, my table. But let's say I want to do this table. There we go. Hot water. That's 110 degrees hot water cleaning. Okay, it's gonna be much more effective than cold water. There we go. See? See that path I cleaned? With the help of hot water, I can clean a lot better in the winter time and in a lot more comfort. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe for a lot more videos to come. Here's my steaming water. I don't know if the camera is picking this up. And put down a comment, give this video a like, and please subscribe to help this channel grow. Okay. In the future, there'll be more interesting videos to come. If you have any suggestions or videos to make, put them down in the comments below. Have a good day. Next Moon YT out.